So I did a video called, she has a high body count. Here's what to do when you find out. And I talked about how, like, you know, if you're, if you're dating a woman and you find out in the course of dating her that she has a high body count, you got to see what she's like in the moment and how she's been with you. And if she's trying to like chase tail with other guys versus not, but if you find out early, you might want to question, you know, if you want to be with her or not. So this guy said, I personally love women with high body counts. They're fun in bed and have lower expectations. So they're easier to deal with. The problem is when guys see them as more than for recreational use. You and her need to understand this and never let that change. She must remain in her place and you must never commit to her, period. Well, I don't fundamentally agree with that for a variety of reasons. One of them being that I have found that there are women that have been with less bodies that will still be highly engaged and willing to do almost anything you want. Because it really does boil down to the level of interest that she has in you and also how open she is to the sexual experience. You could have a woman that has hundreds of bodies, but she's always lying there like a dead fish. So just because she has all these bodies behind her doesn't mean that she's like experienced in the variety of sexual things you want to do. It doesn't mean that she's willing to do all the things in bed you want to, because I've definitely dated women that had high bodies that didn't want to do certain things that I liked in bed. And I'm like, but you've done all this stuff. But well, no, she was with a lot of people. That doesn't mean she did a lot of stuff, you know? So I, I stress it because, again, I don't want there to be a, a, a myth out there that women that have high bodies are better in bed or that they do more stuff. I can assure you that is not true, all right? Um, but more importantly, this idea of, like, a woman that's had a high amount of bodies can never be can never, can only be used for recreational purposes and should, can never be in a, in a serious relationship. Well, the reality is I don't believe that. And you don't know why the woman has high bodies. Like, yeah, there are some women out there. They want to go to Palatine just because maybe they have an extra little testosterone in their bodies and they want to hump like a dude does, you know? But there are some women that like, they might have had trauma as a kid that resulted in them trying to find love by way of bodies. And then they go to therapy. They realize that's not the way to do that. And they stop doing that, but they've racked up like, a hundred bodies, you know? Well, let's say the woman's like 30 years old. She's racked up a hundred bodies. And, and she, again, she went to therapy. She had trauma in her past. She got over it. And now she's 35. She's gone five years without hooking up with anybody. And she meets you. Are you going to really judge her on the hundred bodies she had prior to when she was 30 versus like the years where she actually showed self-control? Because I'd rather date that kind of person than a person who was 35 and has no control and is still just hooking up with whoever, whatever, you know? So, there's more factors than just how many bodies a person had to determine if they're going to be a good mate for you or not. I'm just saying, whatever your judgment is of that, because some guys are like, hey, if she had 10 bodies, she's out. You can have your own judgment call. I just stress that that's not the best way to go about dating. And you could actually miss out on somebody that's really great because of whatever body count they have. All right. Yes, body count can be a, a way to determine the likelihood of how she's going to be with you, but really look at all the other factors that are in play before you have that be the main thing that's making your decision. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see. And I think I'll do this last one here. So this person said, this person commented under three reasons she'll gladly risk losing with the pull away test. And this guy says, uh, my story goes like this. We matched on a dating app and chatted for a few days, less than a week. Then suddenly she went silent. I only texted her twice after she stopped responding. Initially, I thought she might have been busy, so I left, let her be and didn't send any more messages, even though she hadn't replied. A few days went by with no text from her, and I confirmed that she hadn't blocked me. I decided to send another short text. I asked her how she was doing, if everything was okay, and expressed my concern since it had been a few days. I told her to text me back when she had the time. Weeks passed and still no text from her. I assumed she wasn't interested, had perhaps found someone else, rec reconciled with an ex, or maybe even she was uh, some sort of love scammer. There are many possibilities, and I want to emphasize that our conversations were mostly about our daily activities and some random topics. We never discussed anything sensitive that could have caused either of us to stop communicating. It remains a mystery to me why she ghosted me. Okay, so this is where we get into the conversation I've had before, which is as a guy, it's very important to be indifferent to the dating process and not let various things bug you or hurt your feelings. Because let's take this example, right? They talk, talk for a few days and then she's gone. So why is she gone? We don't know. It could have been a bot, meaning it's not a real person. She could have found somebody else in the app that she was more interested in. She could have gotten back with an ex-boyfriend. She could have died. I've heard plenty of stories of like, I was texting this person and then they stopped answering and I was mad. 
And then a few weeks later, I found out that she actually died. I actually uh, emailed a girl one time that I've been dating and she didn't respond back to me, found out she got hit by a car. Like that kind of stuff just happens, right? But the point is whether it was something tragic that happened or she just lost interest or she found somebody else. The point is this, is that you being indifferent to the outcomes of what you're getting in dating is always going to be the best mode of operandi because one, you can't do research into every single girl that rejected you ever and why. And also I found just in, in the process of my dating life that so many situations could happen to whereby she didn't respond back to you that ultimately it boils down to the only thing that matters is you didn't get a response and it's time for you to move on. I've had girls that I was crushing on that stopped texting me, found it years later, they were gay or lesbian. I've, I've had girls that I was texting and they stopped, turns out they got back with the baby daddy. I've had girls that I stopped texting, turns out they were so nervous about the dating process that they just got nervous meeting me and they, they, they weren't quite ready for it and they just put off dating for a few more years. Like you, All that matters is if you're not getting a response back, it is what it is. Hey, not everybody's out there to like you. You're not gonna know every single situation. All you can do is know that if you're not getting the reaction or response that you want, you move on to somebody else. And the faster you're able to get that concept, the easier it's going to be to date because you'll be dating some girl or talking to some girl, things are going great, and then you'll send like two or three texts and she don't respond back. And you won't wait weeks on end to hear from her. You'll just be like, okay, well, I guess I'll be talking to somebody else. And ideally, this is also why in the beginning of dating, you're dating like two, three, four different people because if one goes away, you won't even care. You'll barely notice it because, oh, well, this one went away. I got four other people I'm dating still. So really try to learn to be indifferent to the dating process and whether or not women are messaging you back or not. And A, you'll get better responses. And also you'll feel more empowered to be able to go out there and date the kind of women you want and to be able to have a, a more than enough women to know that if this one doesn't work out, you'll find somebody else. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop. Let's you are go. high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man.